in this episode, I want to talk about pain. I want to talk about failure, loss. But I also want to talk about why it seems like things do work out eventually. And sometimes things even turn out for the better. And we end up in a better place with a better job, better relationship, and sometimes even a better life. This is Invincible Career, and I'm Larry Cornett. I remember it feeling like the end of the world. I thought I'd never be happy again. And this was when I was really young. I had experienced numerous failures at a young age. I've talked about some of this before. It's not fun to talk about, (laughs) but it's reality. I bombed out my first year of college, you know, after the first year, year and a half and lost my scholarship. So I no longer had a full scholarship. I broke up with my girlfriend. My car broke down. I didn't have a good job at all. And I had no idea how I was going to pay my rent. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I even dropped out of college at that point. And when I was younger, Failures like all of those, they were such an enormous setback. You know, when something didn't work out, I just knew that I'd never find something that good ever again. I'd never be happy again. I'd never be successful. It felt like a colossal failure, problem. However, with age comes perspective. And I've now been able to watch what has happened in my life over and over again. And I've witnessed this in the lives of others. In my case, I did go back to school. So I went back to the university. I got my degree. And then I went on to even get a PhD. And I got a great job in Silicon Valley with Apple. I met an amazing young woman, you know. She's uh, incredible. We got married. We've raised three wonderful children together. We've been married for over 30 years now. So things did work out. About 11 years ago, I left my last corporate job and essentially gave up my first career. Started my own business about five years ago as a leadership and career coach. That's why I have this podcast. Hello. Uh, I'm also a business advisor. And we decided to move away from the Bay Area. We moved away from Silicon Valley so that we could be near Lake Tahoe. Um, I've never been happier. You know, it's it's ironic and kind of funny, funny in a strange way, I suppose, that I'm recording this podcast talking about why things work out uh, as we're right in the middle of packing our home for a wildfire evacuation. So <laughs> there is a huge forest fire nearby. It's about six miles away. It's grown from... 40 acres to 54,000 acres in about three days. So scary. Definitely could be something that becomes a colossal failure. I mean, we could lose everything. We could lose our home. And the only thing I think that, that gives me comfort or faith or confidence or whatever, I don't know what to call it, is this perspective that things will work out, that it will be terrible. It's not something that we want to experience. But somehow, in some way, with a lot of effort on our part, it's going to be okay. Things are going to work out. Because what I've witnessed and experienced is that things always work out in the end. And I shared a quote in the newsletter. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, this is Why Things Work Out Eventually, issue 303. It's from Tracy McMillan. 
And she said, everything works out in the end. If it hasn't worked out yet, then it's not the end. And it's true. And I'm not going to say that everything works out. Some loss is terrible. Losing a loved one isn't like, oh, it's going to work out. But with time and therapy and having loved ones and friends, you know, the pain fades and you survive. So I'm not trying to be a Pollyanna here saying everything's going to be great. But I'm just saying it's human willpower that carries us forward so that we ensure that life goes on, that things work out in the end. And what I often find surprising, and I've seen this in my case and I've seen this with others, is that you often end up in a better situation. You end up in a better relationship. You end up in a better job. You end up living somewhere. It's a better place for you to live. And why is that? You know, is it destiny? Is it faith? Was something better waiting for you? You know, this is just inevitable. You know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's any of those things. I think it happens for very different reasons. I think it happens because you're forced out of your comfort zone. You know what you want now. You know what you don't want any longer. You're willing to listen. You're willing to learn. You have renewed confidence and conviction. You raise the bar on what you'll accept. And you start taking a longer-term view of life. So talking about comfort zones, you know, not getting what you wanted, losing something and failing, they all force you out of a comfort zone. And it's human nature. We tend to get comfortable. We tend to settle. So when something bad happens, you know, failure or a loss, it shakes you up. It makes you re-examine your life. And I know that happened with me. We often put up with less than optimal situations because it is, it's familiar, it's comfortable, it's easy. But when you're pushed out of your comfortable nest, you have no choice but to start planning your next move. So there's nothing like getting knocked out of your comfort zone <laughs> to make you make better plans and be more strategic about what you want. And that's the, the next thing that I think causes this this ability to actually end up with something better is that you start thinking harder about what you want. When you lose something, it forces you to re-examine your life. You think harder about your goals, your short-term goals and your long-term goals. You think a lot about what you want next time. You know, as a career coach, I often work with people who've experienced failure and loss. They've been laid off, you know, they lost their job or they were fired. Or maybe they're just in a situation at work that's just, it's just not tolerable anymore. So they're, they just can't put up with it anymore. And as we work together, many people will say, this is the first time that I've thought about what I really want for my career or even for my life. Up until now, it all has just happened. And that happens more than you would think. We kind of just go from opportunity to opportunity without really stopping to think about, is this really what I want? Is this putting me on the path to where I really want to be? Does this support my long-term goals? We kind of just fall into it. Life just happens. So when you lose something you actually can take a breath and step back and think, is this really what I want? What do I want? And just as important is thinking about what you don't want. When you leave a job, a relationship, or even an old life behind, it's an opportunity to also think about what you absolutely do not want in your life moving forward. Knowing what you will no longer tolerate or allow in your life is just as important as knowing what you do want. 
And I think this thought exercise, thinking about what you don't want, is one big reason that we often do end up in a better situation than before. It's why we end up with a better job or we end up in a better relationship. You know, we get comfortable and we often put up with just too much garbage because it's the death of a thousand cuts. It wasn't terrible in the beginning. You know, you wouldn't take a job if it was immediately <laughs> terrible, if it was so terrible before you even said yes to a job offer. You wouldn't take it. Same with a relationship. You know, but sometimes, and this happens, slowly but surely, just bad stuff creeps into it. Bad stuff will creep into the job. A little more every day, a little more every week. Bad behaviors creep into a relationship. And before you know it, you're now putting up with stuff that you never would have initially. And it just built up over time. Well, the loss, moving on to something new, it's a chance to never let that happen again. The other thing that happens with failure is it kind of opens up your ears. <laughs> and I'm sure you've experienced this with a close friend. You watch them in a bad relationship or a bad situation at work. And I think a lot of us give advice. You know, we say, well, maybe you should try this or maybe you shouldn't be with this person. And what happened when you gave that advice? You know, I, I could guess many times they didn't listen. They stayed in the bad relationship. They stayed in the bad job. They stayed until it all fell apart. However, now that that's happened, they, they kind of emerge from the other side of this failure and they're suddenly able to hear you. And we're the same way. It's not like we're different. When we're in the middle of something, neck deep in it, it's hard to be objective. It's really hard to listen to what others are saying and hear what they're seeing. But once you're out of it, you've emerged from this situation, you're more willing to hear and to learn. And that's the next thing is I think we have a renewed willingness to learn. Failure teaches you that you apparently didn't have all the answers. If you did, things would have been great. It's not always your fault, but part of that is like, well, why was I in that bad situation? How did I end up with that bad job, that bad boss? Why did it go south? You know, it humbles us. It certainly has humbled me. I mean, when it happens, you're willing to admit that you don't know everything and you want to learn. Because no one wants to repeat the same failures over and over again. So suddenly we become willing to learn and we want to make better decisions the next time. Every relationship failure that I had made me a better partner the next time because I re-examined my role. What did I do? What went wrong? You know, did it, what was wrong with how I choose a partner? So I had a willingness to learn and, and try to get better. Every work failure educated me. Obviously. It's a chance to take a look at it and say, what was my role in that? Why did I have that conflict with that coworker? What was going on with that boss? What could I do differently next time? My startup failure, it was painful. But that failure forced me to learn more about marketing, sales, growth, how to grow a company, so that my new business would succeed. And what I often see is a renewed sense of confidence and conviction after a big failure or a loss, because nothing fuels me more than failure, loss, frustration. When things go wrong, it gives me an even stronger conviction to pursue my goals with a vengeance. There's a, a quote that I shared in the newsletter from Clarissa Pincola Estes. Failure is a greater teacher than success. And that's true. There are a lot of uh, folks who've said variations of this quote. 
And uh, I think it's because when success happens, we rarely question it. It's not like we have success and we stop and go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Why was that so good? Why did I succeed? You, you kind of just ride that high and you just move forward with life and you keep doing what you're doing. But when you have a failure, now you have no choice but to stop and re-examine and think, what went wrong? I know failure teaches me a lot of lessons. I learn what not to do next time. That's really important. I create a better strategy. I create a better plan. And I bounce back from that failure with renewed confidence. So I think you can use your loss, your failure, your pain, all as fuel. Leverage it to give you greater conviction and a renewed sense of confidence that you're going to succeed with your next venture. And then something happens, uh, you know, I call raising the bar, but sometimes losing something can be the best thing that ever happens to you. And I know that's hard to see in the moment. And of course, it's not true for all losses. You know, as I said earlier, the death of a loved one is, is never a loss that you just get over, right? That's different. But other types of losses in life, you know, in retrospect, I can see that many of my losses ended up being a good thing for me, as strange as that might sound. And if you examine some of your past losses, you might see that pattern too. For example, maybe you dodged a bullet. And I've seen this happen with my clients. I've seen this happen with myself. You know, they did an interview. They really wanted to work for this company and they didn't get the job and they're so upset, crushed. And then later they found out, wow, that was, that was a close call. I dodged a bullet. That company failed six months later. I've seen that happen. Or the company news comes out and they are just torn apart in the media and the press because of something horrible the company's doing. And so you almost worked for a terrible company. Or you find out after you talk to more friends that that guy that you're going to work for is a horrible boss. So you dodged a bullet. In some cases, you almost married the wrong person. And as you look in retrospect, you realize that person wasn't right for you. And you almost got married. That would have been a huge mistake. Maybe you almost bought a house right before the market crashed. That happened with me. <laughs> you know, a couple times. We had an offer on a house and the owner counteroffered. And we were waiting the counter. We're like, man, I don't know if we want to raise our offer. And then I swear within that week, we went into a huge recession. The market collapsed. It was the dot-com crash. So we had almost purchased a home at the peak right before the market crashed. My consultancy was struggling because clients were going bankrupt and disappearing. And so we were able to just be like, no, nope, we're not going to counter. And so we, we dodged a huge bullet there. In other cases, it forces you to raise the bar and find something even better for you. You know, for example, I've watched people go through painful breakups and then end up with a much better partner. Why does that happen? Well, because they now know what they want and what they won't put up with. The pain of that breakup gave them more confidence and conviction to partner with someone even better for them later. Because you know that you deserve better. You won't settle as you may have done in the past. And I've experienced this with jobs and my own startup. Being forced out of my comfort zone by a bad reorg made me smarter and much more intentional about what came next. I turned that into an opportunity to find a better job and to get a promotion somewhere else. So it ended up being a much better thing, which is odd, right? Horrible reorg forced me out of my job, you know, because I didn't want to stay. And I ended up with a much better job. Being knocked out of, you know, what was my plan A with my startup when it failed, it made me kind of pause my life for a few months. I, it was 
bad. I was pretty depressed about that. I went through a really dark period of questioning everything and rediscovering what really matters to me. Then, kind of dusted myself off and planned exactly what I wanted for my career and life moving forward. Every loss is an opportunity to aim higher for something better next time. And then finally, I think that things work out in the end because you start taking a longer term view. You know, as my wife would tell you, I'm not the most positive person in the world. <laughs> I'm a bit of a pessimist. I like to think of myself as a realist. But this is one area where I do have a positive outlook. I've slowly learned to take a longer term view of things. Or I guess I should say, I've learned that even the most painful situation fades with time and slowly gets better. What feels like a disaster right now may even turn out to be a good thing later. You know, it's not easy, but try not to get caught up in the short-term chaos and let the bad emotions overwhelm you. Everything feels worse in the moment. And with time, it does get better. So try to be patient, wait for the dust to settle, and then start making new plans. Loss hurts, but things will get better. Things always work out in the end. You will find something or someone better for you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you would like to follow upcoming releases of the show, please subscribe. And as always, I appreciate your ratings and reviews. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about Invincible Career and the podcast, you can visit InvincibleCareer.com. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck in becoming an opportunity magnet for the best things in life.